while I'm here and while I'm looking, I know that there's water that way, and it's probably about 100, 200 yards, and that's the thing about game trails. When they start going downhill, they'll usually lead to water. This here uh, is a game trail that has been very well used to a point where now it looks like uh, people are using it for, uh, you know, their bikes and everything else, so... Again, with, with the game trails, you know, you'll maybe you'll run across steps, maybe you'll run across a mountain lion or peccaries or a bobcat, maybe you'll even run across people. Me personally, I, I don't recommend any of the above. I don't know if that sun's getting in the way, it probably is. I'm gonna head on back here and talk about a few things and after my last video a friend of mine requested that I do a, uh, a snare video I'm looking at these uh, see these funnel web spiders you can see there's one right there and uh, funnel webs are not dangerous to people in North America. Um, the dangerous ones are in Australia. So they pick up vibrations from the creatures that are crawling around. Now, let me grab a little stick over here and I'll show you that uh, their webs aren't sticky. I don't think we'll be able to get this guy to come out. So I set the alarm on my phone to vibrate and I got that twig going from the bottom of my phone into the uh, funnel web's web and you can see it's right there in the hole now that funnel web spider knows that I'm here and it's being very very reluctant to come out but that stick is vibrating and see if I can get him to come back out to the stick It's not so much the funnel web spider to be concerned about, it's what's feeding off the funnel web spider to be concerned about. Raccoons, possums, and skunks are going to be feeding off these guys. So again, you can set up snares and get yourself a meal that way. Uh, scorpions, centipedes, and uh, a little wasps called a, a pepsid. Hopefully we won't run across any of them. Usually I consider running across any one of those creatures at about 50%. Although it's pretty rare that... Uh, you know, you run across uh, scorpions, and it's even a lot more rare that uh, you'd run across a, a, a pepsid. And pepsid is, uh, uh, the nickname for that is uh, tarantula hawk, and it's basically just a big wasp with either black wings or uh, uh, orange wings. So, we continue on. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. This here is a, uh, a pepsid. This one here is about two inches long. As you can see, it's got the orange wings. And again, it's called the tarantula hawk. On the uh, Schmidt Pain Index, it's rated the second most painful sting on this planet. And uh, their stingers are about a third of an inch long, and they use the whole thing. So, um, again, very, very rare that we would see one. I'm not surprised since... The uh, funnel webs are over there, maybe about 200 yards. And that's what I was saying earlier about uh, what feeding off the funnel webs that you have to be uh, careful about. And as badass as that wasp is, it too has a predator, and the one animal that can eat that is the roadrunner. So, whether you're allergic to venom or not, this thing stings you, it's going to put you on your ass. Uh, again, it's the second most painful venom on the planet just underneath the bullet ant. If you if you don't know if you're allergic to bee venom, ant venom, wasp, what have you, and uh, you get stung and guess what? You are allergic. Uh, you'll get anaphylactis, anaphylactic shock. Some of the symptoms to that are Red blotchy skin, itching, low blood pressure, weakness, and pale color. I've heard of uh, stories where people have had their 
tongue swell up and uh, they can't breathe and they end up hitting the, the ground flopping around so you might want to get tested or at least know before you come out to these game trails in fact uh, I just found me another beehive I can see the bees I can't see the hive but they're in that tree you can see the bees flying around they're there and the trail is right here so if you don't know get tested um, if you're going to be with a group of people you might want to carry some uh, Benadryl or some epinephrine I always have a hard time saying that word and uh, that will help with any allergic reactions if you're going to be hiking down game trails and you run across a, a beehive and you piss off the bees they start coming after you your best defense is to run like hell you get around 200 250 yards away from their hive and they won't consider you a threat anymore and they'll leave you alone if you think you're going to uh, submerge yourself under water or stream pond or a lake um, they'll actually hover above you because they know you're going to be having to come back up for air then they'll hammer you in your face so just run like hell you'll be fine came here a couple of weeks ago and uh, I was doing a video about anaphylactic shock and uh, some of the creatures you're going to run across uh, when you're on game trails and uh, venomous creatures and what have you uh, the last time I was here inside this tree was a very very active hive and it's uh, kind of calmed down a little bit so there's not as many bees in there as before I want to put a flashlight on this handle and uh, put this camera inside this tree and take a better look at uh, the beehive that was in there from the last time that I did a video this little guy right here that's my brightest little flashlight should be interesting to see what's in there hopefully I won't get stung This isn't one of those, uh, I don't recommend doing this type of thing, and then I do it. My thing is, if you're going to do this, know what you're getting yourself into. Make sure you have the right equipment and that you're not allergic to uh, bee stings. <laughs> 